Good afternoon, this is Tim Yu from Remax Real Estate Solutions. Today is January the 25th, 2021. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to file your HST rebate for a brand new condo that you're using as a rental online through the CRA uh, portal or your CRA account that you have. So if you don't have a CRA account, watch the other video. That will give you uh, information on how to fill out the documents manually. But this one is a lot easier. I've never used this method before. A uh, few of my clients pointed this out to me, so thanks out, thanks to Hyamin and Nasalva for, for pointing this out, uh, shout out to them. But this is a much easier way to do it uh, if you do have a CRA account, and I'll show you the step-by-step -step process on how I did it. Again, this is just for informational purposes only. Uh, if this is not tax or legal advice. Um, if you want to get more details on, on the tax and legal side of things, feel free to reach out to your accountant. But I, I did it this way, a step-by-step -step process um, this way, and it, uh, it seemed to have worked for me. So I'm gonna share this with you. So let's get started. So once you log into the CRA account, um, you will see on your related service menu that there is a section where you can file a GST HST rebate. So I'll click that. So you would select GST HST new residential rental property rebate application and then you'd click next so I'll scroll down and click next again which brings you to the online form where you can start filling in your information so let's get started on doing that so your name should already be filled out in the top section here if you do have a HST number uh, that you claim HST from you can actually add your business number in the top section here if you don't have a, if you don't know if you have a business number or not, just leave it blank. Uh, the Revenue Canada will figure it out and um, you know claim it towards your business account if you do have this. So you don't have to worry about this too much. We're going to select English. The main contact person's name is going here. The uh, telephone number of the main contact person goes inside here. Any additional owners, uh, you can put the last name and then the first name. Um, and any middle initials that they do have. Uh, the claimant's mailing address, so you would put your mailing address in here. And then you'd click next. In this section, you're gonna start putting in the information of the property that you're claiming on, so we can get started on that. You're gonna need to have your statement of adjustments ready to go, because some information is gonna be on here that you need. So you make sure you have that out. So we're gonna start with the address of the property, city, province, postal code, and then the relevant date. So the relevant date is the actual final closing date. So you would put in January 20th, 2021. You can also like select it and it'll pull up the uh, calendar for you. And then, the, and then the, uh, the other date is the date that you took occupancy. So on here, you can see the interim occupancy closing, October 3rd, 2019. So we can go to 2019, October, I'll just put in all three. So the lot number or strata number, strata is a term they use in the West Coast for condominium. So basically it's gonna be your condominium corporation. So it's TSCP 2823. 2823. For the plan number, they don't give you much space. So I just put uh, 01 and then level 21. It seems to fit in. Uh, for others, you can put in your locker information, your parking information here. I don't know how important this section is, but we got locker 85D. And if you want to put a parking, you do the same thing like 21C, whatever it is. And is this a mobile home? No. And then you can click next. And then you'll get to this page, section C. So we can start filling this information in. So for this section, you're gonna actually need to have your uh, original agreement of purchase and sale because you're gonna need to get the date on which you actually signed this paperwork. So here it's September 28, 2014. Uh, we're gonna be selecting claim it as a purchaser and a landlord. 
Uh, here's where you put in the original purchase and sale agreement date. So that was um, September 28th. The type of construction, it's new construction. The type of housing is a condominium unit. For this next section, uh, I don't think you need to fill this in unless you're claiming this uh, rebate as an adjustment on line 111. Uh, this is something you can ask your accountant about, but I'm leaving mine blank. The type of application is a type 6. And do you want to include the RC? Yes, you do want to include this as part of your application. And then you click Next, which now brings you to Section D, the calculations. We can uh, start filling this in now. So the type of tax paid is 13% uh, HST. The total amount of GST or HST paid. This information you can get from your statement of adjustments. So let's go back there. So you paid a total of 33,846.96. 33,846.96. Let's double check that number here. And the fair market value of the residential complex. This is the uh, net HST price. So you can get that number here, taxed out price. So 260, 361, 21. 260, 361, 21. Okay. And then uh, the purchase price of the residential complex, you can actually add the same number into here as well and click next, which brings you to this page. Now you're going to add your supporting documentation and upload it to the system. So you're going to need your rental lease agreement. Um, you're going to need the signed purchase and sale agreement, and you're going to add your statement of adjustments for the property purchase. And these are the file formats that you can upload. All right, so let's start doing that. So we can get started with uploading some files. So I'm going to start with the agreement of purchase and sale. Purchase and sale. We'll add that file. And then we'll add another file. Add the lease agreement. Add another file and then we'll add the statement of adjustments all right so once we have all three of those files uploaded uh, we'll hit next which will bring us to this page where we'll review everything before we submit it so you'll notice that all of the information, the calculations have already been pre-filled for you. The important thing is the total rebate amount. So this number should actually match the number that's on your statement of adjustments. For Riverside Square, it was very up at the end. The rebate included in the purchase price. So you can see it was 20,308.17. So you can see it's uh, off by a penny. Uh, which is close enough. I'm happy with this. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here. So I certify that all of these conditions state of above have been met and I want the rebate directly deposited into my bank account. So your branch number is your transit number. So it's the same as uh, this number here uh, on your check. If you actually look at uh, a copy of a, of a void check you'll see uh, that number right here. It's a five digit number. And then this is your bank number. So then you can put in your bank number here. Branch number here, 16372. And then your account number, you would enter it into here, which will be the last digits that I blacked out here, but you'll see your account number here. If you have a void check that looks like this, your account number will show up here. So once you fill in your account number, you can uh, put in the name of the account holder. And then uh, once you finish putting in the name of the account holder, you can click submit. Which now brings you to the final confirmation page. You can save a copy or print this for your records on the bottom below. 
Um, you know, once you have filed this, you should be expecting to get your rebate in the next two to three months directly into your bank account if you did if you did put in your account information. Uh, if not, uh, you should be receiving a check in the mail. So that's it. You've failed your HST rebate. It's simple as that. If you run into any problems or issues, if you get rejected for some reason, you know I highly recommend that you reach out to your accountant or your lawyer. Um, if it's something simple, you can resubmit the information to Revenue Canada and hopefully that fixes that issue. But um, I wish you guys the best of luck in getting your rebate. Uh, again, I've heard in the past that you know there has been applications that have been rejected. So if you're not comfortable with doing this yourself, feel free to contact your accountant or your lawyer to help you out with this. So thanks for watching the video. Uh, that's it for me. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to me directly. Thank you.